Hi friends, this is Joe. This is episode 126 of the Decahedron RPG podcast, and we have video. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, so what happened? Well, first of all, I've been toying with the idea of video for a while anyway. And uh, in fact, if you remember, if you've been a long time listener and you go back to one of the early episodes, like the early double digits somewhere, I said I was looking for a co-host for this new idea. And I had asked James, who was a regular co-host at the time, and he said no. And the idea was video, but <clears throat> it was going to be shorter form. It was actually going to be TikTok, I think, because I think that's where uh, the audience had gone at that time. But uh, it never happened. And yeah. So what happened this time around, though, was that Google had Google Podcasts and the Decahedron RPG podcast was there. Uh, you know, it's also on iTunes. It's on Spotify for podcasters. It's on Spotify. It's on Pocket Cat. It's on all those. But one of the places it was, was Google Podcasts. And that was a fairly, you know, it was, it was in the top three of places that drove traffic to the podcast. And Google shut down Google Podcasts. And they said, you can now move it to YouTube Podcasts, right? And there was a button I had to check. There was a little more than that. But that's what it boiled down to. And so what happened was it took all 125 episodes and it threw them onto YouTube with no video, right? It's just the, the cover art that Design Cat drew for me. And... I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. Kind of cool that I'm on YouTube. Uh, YouTube podcasts, I don't know how that works. Different from normal YouTube. Uh, I use my phone to listen to podcasts. I have an app called AntennaPod. Nope. Yep. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that I listen to, that I use to subscribe to the podcasts I listen to. Uh, so I don't know how it works on YouTube. But, you know, sure enough, when you find me, when you search on YouTube, you can find the Decahedron RPG podcast. And it comes up with just the static image this whole time. And when I'm browsing through YouTube and I see videos like that, I don't like them. So I said, well, I, I don't think it would be a lot of work to record the video. Ha! I was wrong already. <laughs> and then edit it and do the audio feed only the way I am doing and then do the uh, video feed on YouTube. So we're going to give it, yeah. <laughs> so we are giving that a try. <laughs> so uh, I'm looking here because my notes are here. Um, yeah. So what does that mean for the future of the podcast? I don't think it means anything. I suppose there could come a point where say a bunch of people migrate to video and I'm getting like a thousand and I'm getting like a thousand views per episode on YouTube and I'm getting like 10 on the podcast. I'd probably scrap the podcast at that point. Um, I said kind of a similar thing about my blog when I moved to the podcast and that is kind of what happened. My podcast audience is much higher than my blog audience. So I'm like, what's the point in doing the blog? The funny thing is I moved to the podcast one because I love podcasts. I've been listening to podcasts for 20 years now. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do the math. It's right around 20 years. And I love gaming, so I did that. But I had a gaming blog, and I, I did that, and I said, you know, a podcast would be so much easier because I could just pick up my Zoom H1. I don't have it here. It's back in my office. I could just pick up my Zoom H1. I could record something real quick, throw it up there. Yeah, that's not how it goes. A mm -mm -mm. whole lot more time editing the audio than editing the text uh, for the blog. But I'm reaching more people. And that's important to me, not because I'm monetizing anything or anything like that, because what's the point of talking if nobody hears you? You know what I mean? So speaking of YouTube, so all these videos went up and way back in episode eight, James and I did a review. Actually, it was the very first review we ever did on Decahedron of the Equipment Emporium for the Basic Fantasy RPG. And Chris Gonnerman who wrote Basic Fantasy and who is the rights holder and 
you know, pretty much the, the driving force behind uh, basic fantasy. He saw it and he made a comment and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And uh, so we exchanged some back and forth. I asked him to be on the show. He said yes. So uh, we're just trying to work out um, work out time because he talked about a product that I didn't know existed because, you know, I bought Basic Fantasy back in like 2011, I think, 2013, a long time ago. And bought, you know, I have the physical, the printed copy. I'm doing this like I'm holding it in my hands. That's also back in my office. Um, so, you know, I don't go to the website all the time because I have the product. I have that. I have Equipment Corporium. I have the Field Guide. I have a couple of the adventures. Um, yeah, but I bought them, you know, like I said. So there's a new product I didn't know about. So I'm going to let him come here and talk about that. I'm, I'm very excited about that. That will probably be audio only because I'm not going to ask him to get on camera. Um, plus, I don't know how we do the remote camera thing at this point. I don't know. Um, yeah. Again, looking down here because this is where my notes are. <laughs> so anyway, let's talk about something gaming and then we'll get onto some feedback. The gaming thing is a conversation that James and I had years ago. Actually, I'm going to bring it up. So this was actually, I wrote about this on my blog. By the way, my blog, I talk a lot about it this episode. It's called The Vagabond GM. It's over at Blogspot. I'll put a link in the show notes in the description below if you want to check it out. So this I already kind of talked about there back in December of 2020. In fact, I'll link to this exact article. But I wanted to, again, I had an audience of like two on the blog, right? So I wanted to bring it up here where more people can see it because I want to know what you think. So what happened was well, what happened was I had a little bit of writer's block uh, that week because I tried to put out blog episode every week, just like I do with a podcast every week, every Wednesday, I drop an episode. And I said, James, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to write about this week. I said, right, James and I live like 400 miles apart. And so said involved typing. Um, so I was like, I, I don't know what I'm going to write about this week. And he said, I'm going to read this. So I'm looking away. He said, write about an important person in the town. Write about the little things that made him the man he is, a sister, a brother, the time he broke his leg, or when his sister fell into a well, or that time that he killed somebody but no one knows. It was that last part that got my wheels turning, because I was like, if no one knows, why would I write that down? No one knows. Now, I could say it's rumored that he killed somebody. Then that's kind of like somebody knowing. But if truly no one knows and it's a secret, why would I write that down for the players in the source book, if you will, for the, the campaign for the players to see? And so James and I started talking about that. So James said in his mind, knowing that information increases his immersion because he knows more about the world and he feels more connected to it. But in my mind, that like strips away immersion because it's like, you know, stuff that your character doesn't. And so you have to have this outside of your character's head thing. Yeah. I don't think either one of us is wrong or right. Now, let me put this honestly. I don't think James is wrong because I'm going to be wrong, right? I mean, I'm me. <laughs> that is so not the person I am. Anyway, I don't think either one of us is wrong or right. Uh, I think it's just this different way of looking at the world, at gaming, at life. So I want to know your opinion. I'm getting pointy here. I want to know your opinion. Do you think, do you as a player want to know the character secret, I mean, an NPC secret that no one in the world knows that your character doesn't know. Do you want to know that as a player? Now, just to say, huh, I'm clearly schizophrenic. <laughs> um, the last couple episodes, I've talked about a game I've been designing called Legend of the Flying Fish and the Jade Dragon. And the first adventure for that I'm writing, and it's called Blood Chit. 
So in case you don't know, blood chip was this thing often sewn inside of a pilot's jacket during World War II. And the example I'm using is from the Flying Tigers. Um, it's so they got shot down. And of course, they don't speak Chinese. That's where the Flying, <coughs> the flying Tigers were flying, <laughs> uh, fighting the Japanese over China. So it has Chinese written in it. It says pretty much, I am fighting against the Japanese. I am not your enemy. Please provide me with uh, assistance and help and get me to the nearest allied base, something like that. And so if they got shut down, they could show the inside of the jacket to a local that found them who would hopefully be friendly and help them that way. Anyway, so that's the name of the adventure is Blood Chit. And part of the things as I was sketching out this adventure how it would go was was what was a cutscene where uh after the players fly away something happens on the ground and that's just to add tension but it's something that the characters wouldn't have seen so i'm, I'm kind of agreeing with him and i'm going to read this one other thing that james said um because you know in my mind, part of the other reason why you don't give away the NPC secret is because the game isn't the NPC story. It's the player's story, right? It's, we don't care about the, oh, sorry. <laughs> we don't care about the NPCs. We care about the players. The NPCs are just there to set the stage and to provide conflict and support, you know, depending on the NPCs and things to care about, things to hate, you know, all that stuff. And I think if you do too much of telling the NPCs thoughts, their secrets, you're making the story about the NPCs instead of the PCs. And, and I don't like that. And this is what James said. Again, I'm reading this. James said, I did feel that with your game. Not many DMs do that. They're just running a train on the rails. You can't even look to the left or the right, just straight ahead. Which I thought that was very nice of James to say. And uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for that, James. I said thanks in the blog post, but again, thanks again. See, James has nice things still. All right, All right that's it. Let me know <laughs> what you think about knowing the NPC secret, about the GM telling you stuff that you're character doesn't know. Do you want to know that? Does it put you deep in the story? Does it take you out of the story? Is it the GM just becoming a, a storyteller and you're forced to sit there and listen? What do you think? If you're on the YouTube side, feel free to put comments in the, the area below. If you're on the podcast side, actually, if you're on the YouTube side, you can do it this way too. It helps me out, actually, though, you make comments because YouTube says, that's engagement. We must like this video. And they push it a little more, but whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're on the other side, you can send feedback to feedback at decahedron.com. Decahedron spelled with a K. Um, there's ways to send audio feedback, too. All the information is in the show notes and it's in the info box below on YouTube or in your favorite podcaster. All right, podcatcher. <laughs> Uh, clearly, I'm your favorite podcaster, right? Yeah, no, I didn't think so. <laughs> anyway, let's do some feedback. Mail call from the United States of America. So I am backed up with feedback. I have 12 feedback sitting right here. So I don't think I'm going to get to the feedback I talked about last time. Um, but I said next time we'll listen to because there's 12 here. We don't have that much time. <laughs> so let's do the first one. The first one is from Jason. Jason is the host of the Nerds RPG Variety Cast. He says that he is not making any more episodes. But he made that announcement on April 2nd, which means he recorded that on April 1st, which means I'm not buying it. Everyone else is falling for it. I refuse to believe it. I think that this is a big April Fool's joke from Jason and that he is going to continue podcasting. Maybe, just maybe, that's me, wishful thinking. <laughs> um, and like being the ostrich and putting my head in the sand and everything. But I don't know. I think it would be making great April Fool's gag. And if it were me doing that, carrying it on all through the month and then in May saying, ha, April Fool's, 
yeah, that's that's the kind of thing I would do. So um, I'm going on record. No one else has said that. I'm going on record. I'm saying that I did not fall for it, Jason. You are not ending. <laughs> uh, we'll see. All right. Anyway, let's listen to uh, Jason's voicemail. Hey, Joe. Great episode 118. Really enjoyed it. I tend to dislike when episodes are broken up into part one, part two, just because it makes me wait. And, you know, I'm impatient in my old age. But I thought you guys did a great job. I had never put together the fantasy trip and tunnels and trolls like that. I like, I never played the fantasy trip back in the day. Any of it. I, I had GURPS, but not, you know, the older ones. And like Daniel, I've got the big box set after Steve Jackson regained control of the fantasy trip. And I've never opened it. <laughs> so... You know, I've only got a vague memory. I remember Dark City Games putting out, you know, Fantasy Trip retro clones and things, and I thought they got stamped out when Steve Jackson got control of that. I thought they stamped out some of those retro clones, but maybe not. But anyway, great job. Really enjoyed part one, and I look forward to your thoughts on part two and Daniel's thoughts on part two when it comes out. Take care. Hey, Jason. Thanks for that. Uh, as for splitting the episode into part one, part two, yeah, I can see that. I could, um, yeah. Like, I hate watching half a movie. Like, you go to the movies to watch a movie, and it ends with, like, to be continued. Oh, that really irritates me. Like, the last animated Spider-Man? Or should I say, the last Spider-Man cartoon? <laughs> All right, that's an inside joke for the use that, uh, use? <laughs> for you that follow my podcast for a while. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, and like for that, I've never seen the second Pirates of the Caribbean because of that reason, because a friend of mine, co-worker, went to see it, and he came back and he said, oh, no, it's one of those half-movie things, so I said, I forget it, and for that reason, I've never watched the Lord of the Rings movies, so there you go. Actually, I watched the first one, and I fell for that, and uh, Fellowship of the Ring, I was like, yeah, I'm not, forget it, I'm not watching the rest, so I did it. I did watch the Hobbit movies, though, and, and yeah. Anyway, so I get your pain, but I'd rather put out two short episodes than one too long episode. I think a half hour is a sweet spot for my episodes. Um, the fantasy trip in Tunnels and Trolls, yeah, it it came to me one day, and the similarities, but I already talked about all of them on episode 118, so I'm not going to talk about them again. But yeah, it came to me. And then a few months later, I was reading um, Ken St. Andre's, he made a post about something. He was talking about, this was before the Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls came out. And he said something about, you know, Steve Jackson never agreed when he did the edit for Monsters Monsters. I was like, oh, now it all makes sense. It goes together. Uh, yeah, like you, I never had the fantasy trip back in the day. Uh, I've said many times before that I started playing GURPS before GURPS was GURPS, though. So after Steve Jackson left metagaming and started Steve Jackson Games, the first GURPS product was called Man to Man, which was pretty much the melee of GURPS. It was just the combat system, just the four fighters. And that's when I started playing. And that was when I went home for the trial from that robbery <laughs> anyway um so yeah so yeah gurps uh, yeah but no dark city games was not stamped out their website still exists they still sell their little adventures and they still have the free versions of legends of the ancient world legends of time and space legends legends of the something west old west wild west i can't remember all right. Thanks for that call, Jason. Uh, I am going to put a link to your, sh your show in the show notes because, again, I am not falling for... I'm not falling for your April Fool's joke. All right. Next one, also from Jason. Hey, Joe. Jason here. Just finished part two of your review, and I really enjoyed it. I don't really have a whole lot of comments. I think everything you guys hit on is right. And... Yeah, I'm pretty much with you on the idea of retro clones and ones that are quote-unquote approved and ones that aren't. 
or, you know, games that have OGLs or things that have properties in Creative Commons that allow you to work with them as opposed to somebody that doesn't. So, anyhow, great job. Looking forward to what you do next. Take care. Oh, for Fudge, you may want to reach out to Che Webster of Roleplay Rescue for the review of Fudge. Just saying. Hey, Jason, thanks for that. Yeah, the, the retro clones thing, we talked about that before. I am I am so on the fence about that. Like I said, all the stuff like like basic fantasy, like we're talking about the white box. Um, what's the other one that everyone talks about? The one that they split up into all the little books these days. Um, I don't know. That one. So anything based on OGL content, yeah, I'm definitely okay with. No, no problem at all. People that recreate an older game that's out of print, yeah, I don't have a problem with that either. People that recreate an existing game, I, I, I don't know because rules aren't copyrightable. So if they're doing their own presentation and everything, it should be okay and I should be okay with it. And I'm a big proponent of open source stuff. Um, huge but i mean yeah yeah huge um yeah i don't know though it, it i don't know i don't know i don't know all right uh the other thing that you said was reaching out to shay webster if i remember right um on your podcast once shay webster called in and mentioned that he was on the uh fudge bailing list back when that was a thing and i was and i called in to mention that so the problem with having Shea Webster on might be <laughs> usually when I'm doing a review, if I'm very positive about the property, I, I pick somebody who might be a little more neutral to balance it out. Or if I'm a little negative on the property, I might look for something that's particularly positive uh, to be on it, to again, to balance it out. And I have very positive vibes about Fudge and I think Shea Webster has very positive vibes about fudge. So on the other hand, finding someone who doesn't like fudge, that might be difficult. Actually, they exist because one of my old gaming groups, they uh, they didn't like the they didn't like the words. They said we're doing math with words, right? Because fair plus two is great, right? And that's just weird. And I'll I'll give them that. Um, yeah. Anyway, thanks for that call. And next one is from Evil Jeff. Evil Jeff is the host of the Minions and the Musings podcast. It's a great podcast, though these days it's much more about musings and nothing about minions, but it's still great. Joe, Evil Jeff. Hey, just uh, listen to the award show. Uh, thank you for uh, your... Thank you for the gift that you're sending in my way the first day. Um, but I wanted to actually get back with uh, the fact that nobody in that group knew the original The Avengers TV show. I mean, now I'm starting like I feel old or something because nobody – well, um, I'm not as old as other people, but still, come on. I thought people had more culture or something like that. No, nah, I'm just joking. Um, yeah, but I mean Patrick McNee, you know, and then, you know, a couple different sex kittens there. You know, Diana Rigg, uh, Honor Blackman. Oh, yeah. Um, what was it? Linda Thornton? Thornton, I think. Thorson. I mean, you know, just a, a great TV show. The reboot, who cares about the reboot? Uh, that thing with Val Kilmer, I wouldn't have trusted it anyway. But, you know, the original is where it's at. Um, a little campy and everything at times, but all in all, good storylines, and, you know, pretty solid acting in many ways. And Patrick McNee, you know, he didn't need James Bond, you know, doing all he did. You know, Patrick McNee was a pretty good agent, you know, among his own rights. All right. We'll catch you later. All right. So what Evil Jeff is talking about, Evil Jeff is talking about, um, we had a giveaway on the podcast. 
actually we've had several, but uh, we were giving away a set of fudge dice, speaking of fudge, and Evil Jeff was the winner. So you're welcome, Evil Jeff. Uh, I'm glad that you got the dice. I'm glad that you got to split them with the minion, and uh, it makes me happy. As for the Avengers TV show, so first of all, there is also another show from around that same time period, I think, called The Saints, I think, and that has Roger Moore, am I right? Two shows I don't know. I've never seen either of these shows. Although I did see the movie version of The Saints. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I don't know. Um, feeling old? I'm, I'm older than you. I just like better television. <laughs> I know, seriously. Um, that show does predate me, and I'm older than you, so I'm sure it predates you. So the only time I would have seen it was in repeats. When I was growing up, that show wasn't in repeats. It was all shows like Bewitched and Odd Couple and Nanny and the Professor and I Dream a Genie, you know, all those, Dick Van Dyke, Mary Tyler Moore, all those classic American sitcoms. This... No, this didn't show up on my television at all. So maybe when cable became a thing, cable was just coming to the town I grew up with, like in my last year of high school and stuff, we were too, for, too, blah, blah, we were too poor to afford it. Uh, my girlfriend at the time had it, and they had HBO, I think. And every time I went over to her house, they were watching Beastmaster every single time, which made me think that cable was just this thing that had MTV, and Beastmaster, MTV. <laughs> you know the first uh, the first video they ever played on MTV? Video kill the radio star. So I'm wondering if, will video kill this podcast? Hmm. Anyway, that was actually one of my, eh, not important. Um, yeah, so, and then, yeah. <laughs> so it was on cable like in the early 80s I wouldn't have seen it and then I went to England for three years where cable wasn't even a thing so if it was airing like before 1988 on American television like on cable maybe uh, Nickelodeon TV land whatever I I wouldn't have seen it then so I came back to the States in 88 so what I have to bring after that but yeah I'd never saw the show sorry Okay, uh, the next call is also a call from Evil Jeff. Yo, Evil Jeff. Hey, just finished listening to the three different Minotaur Thieves. Uh, good stuff there, like uh, what people did there. Um, glad you put out Fate Accelerated. Uh, I think that's the system which I've messed with some, and I like it. and. Wouldn't mind getting more into it, using it here and there. Uh, but the big thing I was calling about was Dark Fluid. Uh, brought up something from the Player Options Handbook, which I know I'd seen before, but I've never actually read. I don't own it. And that point by system that he came up uh, when I came up with, that he uh, put out there, is something that I actually had thought of myself uh with a game with the minions a couple of years ago when uh, we were, the way the campaign was structured, the adventurers were going to be above average. They were being recruited that way because I was ratcheting up the difficulty on the island itself where they were going to go. So I wanted them not to have any negatives and everything. So that's, I did that same sort of thing of 75 points to put into the stats. Also had the uh, caveat in there that none of their uh, stats could be below 9. You could go to 9, but you couldn't be below 9, which prevented them from having these characters that were, you know, heavy on one end, very light on the other, as forcing them to you know, choose how they wanted to spend their bonus. So, yeah, good stuff there. Appreciate what you put out. Hey, Evil Jeff, thanks for that. Uh, the Mentor Thieves, yeah, that was fun. I like doing that. That was so. If you this is your first time listening, uh, a few episodes back, actually, that was the episode where he won the uh, dice too. Uh, a few episodes back, 
we did a thing where me, James, who is a frequent co-host here, and Dark Fluid, who had won our previous giveaway. <laughs> um, and whenever you win a giveaway on the show, you're invited to come back and host our next giveaway co-host. Anyway, um, so what we did was we all made a Minotaur Thief because reasons. Yeah, it was fun. I made mine in Fate Accelerated. James made his in D&D Second Edition. And Dark Fluid made his in... Was it Barbarians of Lemuria? I think it was. Um, yeah, it was fun. But he did this point by system. So my thoughts on this point by system. Okay, 75 points. 3d6 down the line, your average points will be 63. 75 versus 63, that just screams out Munchkin to me. Munchkin, Munchkin. Um, I am a fan of the everyday hero. This is what makes Die Hard such a great movie, is because Bruce Willis's character is an everyman. Right? He's you. He's me. He's the slub who is forced in this situation. And he can't rely on his amazing strength, his awesome intellect, or any of that. All he can count on is his, his inner strength, his grit, his determination. He has to do what he has to do to save his family makes it a great story. By the time we get to the fourth or fifth movie and he's jumping over a Harrier. Wow, wait. Did I just quote... <laughs> uh, did I just quote Michael from The Office? I, I think he has a bit where he does that. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway, but I'm sticking with it. Right, I like that. I like that on my role-playing game. So I get that's not what you're going for, and especially when you're playing with kids you want to do some power gaming i get it but for me it, it's not my thing uh especially when you say no low stats i think low stats can make for some great role playing and i that's just taking away a, a lot of opportunity i like forcing actually last episode where i talked about the game design for uh flying fish j dragon i said you know three year stats have to begin at negative one because I think that makes for more interesting play. Not everybody is great at everything. There are things that everyone, yeah, <laughs> everyone has something that they are not good at. Even me. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even pretend to be the. So this has been running just a little over a half hour now. So I'm going to end it here. Because like I said before, I like to keep the episodes around a half hour or so. I'm going to end it here. Uh, we will do more feedbacks next time. I will hopefully have some feedback about my question. About do you want to know the NPC secret? Do you want to know things in the world that your character wouldn't know? I don't. Do you? Let me know. Again, feedback at decahedron.com. YouTube comments, say hi dot chat slash decahedron. That lets you leave a voice message if you are a voice person. Um, or I have a feedback number. It's 562-774-2278. All that information is in the show notes. By the way, that's 562-RPG-CAST. See what I did there? I love phone numbers that spell something. My normal phone number, my that's just a Google voice number. No one will ever answer that. Don't worry about being <laughs> hi no that's not gonna happen uh but my normal phone number that also spells something it spells something awesome and amazing but i'm not crazy enough just to announce it and put it out there in podcast slash youtube land no that's not gonna happen but it's a great phone number i love it <laughs> anyway uh yeah let me know what you think about all of that and yeah that's pretty much it so thanks for listening and until next time happy gaming happy life Bye. Thanks for listening to the Decahedron RPG podcast. Please.
come back again to the Tekihidren RPG Podcast.